Hi, Phil Vales here for another edition of Your Backyard. Uh, today we're, we have a beautiful spring day, finally. Um, we're going to be uh, uh, touring Oak Hill, Tophet's Chasm. And I have to say up front that I've had a dilemma whether or not to pronounce this Tophet's or Tophet's. So I'm going to opt for uh, Tophet's Chasm. And um, Oak Hill and Tophet's Chasm is really a jewel in the Littleton Conservation uh, Lands portfolio. And it's uh, available to everyone in the town of Littleton. And today we're going to tour the chasm, which is a unique geologic feature. And um, I hope that uh, uh, this show will pique your interest to come out to Oak Hill and Tophet's Chasm. We just traveled up the main, the main road, and straight ahead is the path to Lookout Rock, and to the right here is the Tophet's Chasm. Now, as you can probably hear in the background, this is springtime, and people are blowing their leaves, if, if you can hear that. Uh, we're now going to take this right turn, and we're going to head into Tophet's Chasm. Well, we're about 300 yards, maybe 200 yards up the road from where we turned off. And we're following the yellow trail. Where'd it go? Right here. Here's the yellow trail. And um, I want to make note that we're going to stay on the yellow trail. And just up here, there's a break in the stone wall. And we're going to follow the yellow trail to the right. If you were to go straight on the orange trail that would take you a little little closer to summit rock and also lookout rock which uh, we'll do some other time uh, i want to make note that we've had a, a a very cold march and recently we had a, a, a lots of rain and the results of that right now is it's really warming up in here and really greening up. I see lots of uh, ferns greening up, mosses. I, I expect we're gonna see princess pine um, uh, popping up all over the place. Uh, types of trees we're gonna be looking for are a lot of white birch. We're gonna be walking into a beautiful hemlock forest uh, as we approach the chasm. So here we go. This is one of my favorite walks in Littleton. We're in a beautiful uh, hemlock forest here. And uh, something I have to point out to you over here, which is beautiful, is all this mountain laurel, which is a native species to this area. And Oak Hill has mountain laurel all throughout. It's really an attractive, flowering species. We're not uh, near flowering yet. A few more weeks and we'll see beautiful, beautiful white with a little bit of pink uh, flowers on it. I can see the buds. They're trying, they're trying. Um, but mountain laurel is throughout Oak Hill and other places in Littleton as well. So this is really beautiful. Well, as you've probably noticed by our camera work here, we're starting a descent into some lower land. And where we're really going to is the rim of the chasm. And we're going to be on the south side of the chasm. We're going to walk along. And this is going to be at the end of the chasm. I have a little injury here. I was doing a little bushwhacking before in the mountain laurel. Got hooked up a little bit. Um, Tophet's Chasm has a very rich geologic history, one of which that includes bedrock geology and also glacial geology. The chasm itself, uh, has, uh, we're going to focus on a lot of glacial geology uh, today. And I, I'd like you to all envision, if you would, that about 13,000 years ago, there was a, a, a glacier here to the north of us that was about a mile high, okay? 
and uh, I'd like you all to envision that. And uh, about 13,000 years ago, there was a lot of melting of that glacier. And as that glacier melted, it released a lot of water. And a lot of water resulted in the carving of Tophet's chasm. It uh, also accounted for the shaping of our various uh, uh, river areas, such as the Nashua um, uh, watershed, the Stony Brook watershed, the Merrimack watershed, all our watersheds here owe a lot of the um, directions they take and the landforms that we see around them to the melting glacier. So I'd like to, you to keep that in mind as we continue our descent into Tophet's Chasm. Okay, we've just turned the corner uh, on, the, on the south wall as we come into the chasm. And uh, just to orient everyone here, uh, we're on the south wall. This is the south wall of the, canyon, uh, of the chasm. The north wall is over here. The east opening, which is where all the water went out, is to my left. And the west, which will be the head wall, of the chasm is up here. Now, what I'm standing in here is a what's thought to be a glacial meltwater channel. And we're going to see several of these as we go along the uh, south wall of the chasm here. And these are depressions that are about 10 feet deep. Of course, they've been filled in uh, over the years with a lot of leaf litter and whatnot. But it's thought that as the glacier was melting, a lot of water being released was kept in its path down to the chasm by the glacier that's still holding behind us. And there's a, there's a ridge of hills over here. And part of this ridge of hills over here can, consists of Lookout Rock, which is another um, uh, part of Oak Hill. Uh, but this ridge of hills, which actually extends down to Shrewsbury, it's called the Shrewsbury Ridge, kept the water in these channels. And we're going to see several of these channels as we walk along, along the south wall. We see over here to my right a, another one of these meltwater channels going down to the chasm. Okay, I'm enjoying this beautiful hemlock forest. I'm in the middle of another meltwater channel here. This is a, a good time to orient ourselves a little more to some of the dimensions of the chasm. The chasm is approximately 2,000 feet long. The width of the chasm uh, ranges, uh, well, from the head wall, which would be very, very narrow, out to about 200 feet wide. Now, the, the walls of the chasm down down to the bottom would be about 90 feet. And over the years, uh, it used to be about 135, 140 feet. Uh, it near rivaled the depth of Niagara Falls to give you some sense of the, the height of the uh, chasm. Now, over the years, the, the chasm has filled in with leaf litter and various debris, as, as have these channels. We're going to, as we walk up a little further, we're going to get some spectacular shots into the chasm. So you really get a uh, perspective of the depth of things. And then, of course, we're going to go down into the chasm and you'll be looking up. So you'll really get a sense of um, uh, depth from that perspective as well. Okay. This should give you a sense of the depth of the chasm here. As we look down, you can see water in the chasm, which I'd expect with all the, with all the uh, rain that we've had. We're probably 90 feet above the chasm. We're not at the highest point yet. We're gonna um, have, have some much higher points and we're gonna see a lot more bedrock exposed uh, along the way. And when we, when we see that, uh, I have lots to say about that. Uh, something that, I, that my eye is being attracted to here is as I look at a number of these trees, is I can see there's been sloping of the land that has 
move these trees out along the the uh, roots and um, uh, that's very interesting to to give you some sense of how this land has been moving down okay pressing on these trees as they grow the the roots move down um, this is pretty steep probably well it's pretty steep it's going to get a lot steeper for sure the camera crew is doing a great job holding the camera up. Well, isn't this nice walking along the south wall? I have a nice, nice chair here that someone has put. And I'm sitting down next to the second glacial erratic that we see coming along the south wall. I'm somewhat distracted about some of the bird sounds. Yay, we're out early, sort of. Uh, but we have a, a, a woodpecker that's really doing some drumming in the background, and I hear some chickadees throughout, some titmice. And this glacial erratic here is a combination of material, which is interesting. We have a pegmatite here that has intruded into some granitic gneiss, and uh, it, it, it's a combination. and. Uh, this was formed under the surface of the earth and over time when the glacier um, did its advanced and grinding it eroded rock like this carried it in its in its load and dropped it as glacial till and we see uh, our landscape in Oak Hill and for that matter in New England just littered with glacial till rocks and cobbles and boulders of all different sizes and this is one example of a glacial erratic. And an interesting thing about a glacial erratic is it may have traveled feet or it may have traveled many, many miles from its original source. I can look down into the chasm here and I can see that there's a lot of water in the chasm. And uh, this past year I had walked all through the chasm uh, and there was no water because we were in a drought situation. But now the chasm appears to be full of water, but we're not going to let that deter us from going down into the chasm. We're going to work our way down there. So um, finding this chair was a lovely treat. So we'll continue on. I'm looking across from the, we're still on the south rim of the chasm, and I'm looking across to the north uh, uh, side of it, and I think you can get a sense of just how steep these walls are. And uh, right around here, we're about at a point in the chasm, I'm going to estimate it's about 125 feet wide on the bottom. Okay, it tapers up. Um, uh, slightly on both sides. The north side is higher than the south side here. But these slopes are very, very, um, very steep. We're going to be coming uh, to an area where they're near uh, nine, 90 degrees steep. I can see water all through the chasm, which is going to be great for some of the, the spring species. It's going to be um, uh, wonderful for breeding of frogs, uh, salamanders, um, spring flowers. Um, the, the chasm actually becomes a very colorful place in the spring. Walking across the south side of the chasm, came across a little friend here. It looks like a garter snake. And he hasn't moved since I've noticed him. He may be, um, that may be a form of camelot, uh, camouflage that he's exhibiting, not moving. I also just heard behind me a, a red-bellied woodpecker. And we'll see if we can catch that sound again. This snake is not moving. I suspect when I walk by, it's going to move, so we're going to see if he moves. 
Well, I'm down a little bit on the south wall here. I've been attracted down here by the deposits of Tadmuck Brook Schist, which are down here. And you get a sense for the steepness of this. It worked my way up. I can feel the moss, how wet it is. And after running into that snake, it's uh, occurred to me that there's a lot of life that's waking up springtime and we should look a little closer for some of it. So I'm gonna turn up a few rocks and see see what we might find under some of these rocks. Now I know there's ticks out. Ticks are in season. I've been pulling them off of myself already. These are examples of the Tadmuck Brook Schist and I'll talk more about that, how shiny it is. I don't see anything here. Let's see what might be living under here. I see roots. If I didn't know better, I, I would say that these might be spider eggs. Let's see what else we got. This is another meltwater channel that we're in here, and you can see that the recent rains have really, really kept things wet. Let's see what else is around. Some roots. I don't see any, anything there. Okay, well, we'll pull some more up when we get down into the chasm. I have been hearing a uh, red-bellied woodpecker quite a bit, so that's a good sign. Um, okay, that's a red-tailed hawk that just zoomed by us. Beautiful markings on it. The tail was quite orange underneath, which you really can't count on for all red-tailed hawks. Still on the south rim of the chasm, and this is one of the larger glacial erratics. This one is actually nicknamed Egg Rock. This is a pleasant stream running from the height of land. I can't even see where it's starting, but it just has a beautiful sinus nature to it. And one could envision on a much larger scale how one of these glacial meltwater channels could be formed. And we see here the water cascading from the height of land, and it's going all the way down into the chasm. We're still on the south wall, the south rim of the top of the chasm. Uh, we've just about hit the head wall, and we're gonna now turn our attention to the head wall of the chasm. chasm. These two holes uh, in a beech tree, and, and we do see a lot of beech here mixed among uh, the hemlock. These two holes in this particular beech tree, I watched uh, pileated woodpeckers last spring uh, working their way around them. I'll be interested as, a, as I walk through here during the spring to see if pileated woodpeckers or some other animal, perhaps an owl, uh, takes up residence in those holes. We are now on the orange trail. We completed our uh, walk along the southern rim of Tophet's Chasm, and we took a right on the orange trail, and this is the head wall of the chasm, okay? And now we're gonna uh, proceed, take a look at what the head wall looks like. Well, among these beech trees here, there is a oak tree, and on this oak tree is a beautiful barrel that's up here, B-U-R-L. I don't know how burls are formed, but I do know woodworkers love getting burls. They'll cut them off and shape beautiful bowls out of them, and they, they do make some absolute works of art. The uh, contours of the grain, 
when they're carved out are really beautiful. And that's a burl. It's always good to make note of your surroundings when you're walking anywhere, for that matter. You'll notice that this um, hemlock tree, oh, it's about 100 feet high, that I'm right next to, has been broke. Okay, and it's being held up by this large oak. And I know at some point this is going to come down. Now, I've, ob I've observed this for the last year and a half. It hasn't come down yet. Uh, but it will at some point. So always good to just check out your surroundings because there are a lot of broken trees um, and snakes on the ground and things like that. So be aware of your surroundings. We're now at the, at the head wall of Tophet's Chasm. Uh, this is another meltwater channel and I'm looking to the east. So west, east, we were on the south wall over here and the north wall is over here. As I look over into the chasm, I start seeing the beautiful greening up of springtime, hearing a lot of sounds, and I get a sense of just how steep, steep the sides are. I can't wait to go down in the chasm can't wait to see how the film crew's going to do. Okay, we're now on the north side of the uh, rim of Tophet's Chasm, and we're roughly paralleling Harvard Road, which is probably a quarter of a mile to my right. And the significant thing about uh, Harvard Road and that location is that tends to be the trending direction of the Clinton Newbury Fault, which is a significant fault line that runs actually from eastern Connecticut up to uh, through Clinton Mass and up up to Newbury, uh, Newbury, Massachusetts. And it does affect uh, the geologic setting of Tophet's Chasm. But what I wanted to uh, uh, mention here is this beautiful outcrop of quartzite. And this is a, a metamorphic rock, meaning that it was subjected to um, high pressure at great depth and it uh, causes quartz to metamorphose or change into, into quartzite. And there's some very interesting colors in it, some beautiful crystal, crystal formations through it. You see some reds. Some of the reds and oranges could be uh, iron that's um, rusting, oxidizing, and that's quartzite. But another significant rock that we're going to see here is the Tadmuck Brook Schist. And the Tadmuck Brook Schist that we see in Tophet's Chasm tends to be uh, massive in size. We'll see some boulders down here that are bigger than houses. Um, and this is formed under uh, high compressional uh, forces of continents moving together. And you can see it becomes very platy, okay, that, it, that it's effectively layered from the compressional forces pushing it together. And it's not all that competent, meaning, you know, if you work at it, you can break it up fairly easily. But this is a Tadmuck Brook Schist, and it's um, fairly unique to Oak Hill, and uh, it was named after the Tadmuck Brook, which is in Westford, Massachusetts. Okay, Tadmuck Brook Schist. Okay, we moved from the head wall. We're now on the north trail, which is actually back on the, on the yellow trail on the north side of the um, chasm. And uh, we see here uh, water flowing down into these beautiful vernal pools that collect here. And uh, the, these vernal pools really serve a valuable um, uh, role in the wetlands ecology because this allows uh, uh, small creatures to breed, tadpoles, frogs, uh, and other small uh, creatures to breed. And the thing with vernal pools that makes them unique is there's no fish in them, okay? So the animals can breed without the worry of being um, uh, predated, predated 
um, uh, by fish. And these vernal pools, uh, these are actually uh, larger than I've ever seen them. Okay, normally there's just the one back there, but uh, I see this year they've really expanded. We have water running down, and um, that's what that is. Well, we finished our traverse of Tophet's Chasm. We're ending here on the north rim of the chasm. I hope you've enjoyed this show. I've really enjoyed uh, walking around here with the camera crew today. And um, for our next edition of Your Backyard, we're going to go down into the chasm, and we're going to see a whole different world down there. We'll see you next time.